The COVID-19 pandemic and the varying degrees of lockdown have been with us now for almost a year. And it goes without saying that small businesses have taken on a significant financial burden through the lockdowns over this past year. Anyone who is involved in the arts is all too aware of the stress that the pandemic has had on their income. For many artists, paying the basic monthly bills has become a trial. Arts organizations and individual artists have felt the effect of the pandemic as their craft has been viewed by many as superfluous or, or, quote, extras in this truly unique time. Jordan Van Sewell has been a ceramic artist here in Winnipeg for almost 50 years. He has worked and has had works exhibited at various art galleries around the world and has made his living as a sculpture artist, which is no small feat, even pre-COVID. He has his own gallery at the Forks Market that showcases some of his truly unique work, and it is with great pleasure that I get to chat with this Winnipeg artistic icon. Hello, Jordan. Nice hey, to meet hi. you. Nice to be here. Mm-hmm. Five decades is a long time to be focused on art. Tell me, what attracted you to the arts? You know, even as a child, I, uh, I've, I've always been uh, crafty and, and like doing hands-on activities and stuff. And uh, probably one of the first things was some Red River gumbo and just making mud pies and stuff. But it's funny how quickly I came back to that at about age uh, 15 or something. I rediscovered clay and I've been working in it. Like you say now, it's been, you know, 50 years counting. And um, part of it is the the allure of the material. I think of the fact that this stuff is is the first dirt. This is the... uh, the, you know, it was once mountains, it's now been pounded into powder. And uh, I get to have this transmorgification with it where I get to turn it from, you know, this commo- this uh, riverbank mud into a permanent piece of art. And uh, with the help of the kiln, it's easy to achieve. The skills that I've developed over the 50 years have now allowed me to make virtually anything I want. Mm. So that keeps me... Uh, coming back to the bench every day. Nice. Uh, you chose ceramic sculpture as your method of artistic expression. Who are your mentors and who inspired you? And maybe quickly, could you describe your art? How would you describe your your art? Well, it um, has been described as California funk or figurative uh, narrative uh, whimsy. And uh, there's a number of things that go along with it. But essentially, um, I think understanding my uh, the genesis of it, which was... Uh, like Charles Schultz, Peanuts comic strips, and then uh, the emergence of, uh, you know, when they animated it on TV. Right. And then, of course, uh, that same television uh, brought uh, the Beatles and that whole generation. Uh, so m- my influence has always been uh, the popular culture, but in art specifically, it would have to be people like Big Daddy Ed Roth and uh, that sort of California movement of... Uh, of uh, tongue-in-cheek and whimsy and uh, a celebration of color and form in, in I guess, in artistic terms. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in addition to selling uh, works at the gallery, I understand that you do a lot of commissions, including one which was presented to Queen Elizabeth. Can you tell us the story behind that? Well, that was a nice thing because uh, f- our former lieutenant governor, Peter mm-hmm. Lieba, was... Uh, choosing a parting gift for, for his tenure as a, in, in government house and uh, presents the queen with uh, uh, something that's reflective of Manitoba. So uh, he commissioned me to do a York boat with a uh, polar bear at the helm and a beaver up the flagpole looking uh, into the waters ahead and a bison. So I think I, I was able to uh, personify three of our... Uh, you know, pretty cool indigenous animals to this province specifically, right? And put it in, into the context of uh, something historic as a as a York boat, and then to send it back to uh, the genesis of the whole thing, which was uh, the throne of England. Was it was a great thing to uh, to have been uh, asked to do. It's amazing. Uh, you primarily you do work in ceramic, but I know you also do sculptures in bronze and uh, other materials what was that sculpture made out of well that particular one was was clay as well okay but um yeah the thing with uh, bronze is uh, because it costs a little more it, it it it's not that it's cost prohibitive but the immediacy of the clay is uh is something that 
um, I, I actually have done pieces in bronze and maintained the whole clay process by doing one-offs rather than additions because with additions you're you're taking away from that whole uh, feel of the material and you're, you're putting it into a uh, into a, a process so uh, when I've spent time in Mexico I've worked in a foundry down there just doing rudimentary things the way uh, the way they did it uh, you know it's been done that way for thousands of years now hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so you have the uh, gallery at the Forks Market. Uh, when did you open the gallery at the, at the Forks? You know, it was uh, it was over two years ago now. It was uh, uh, I'm into my third year, and it's through the generosity of the Forks that I'm there because um, you know I think I've I've lent something to the uh, to the whole vibe of of the Forks now by having a gallery, which originally the space I'm in was a gallery. 30 years ago. So for me, be, between it be, having been a gallery and having it been a freight shed for the railway, I uh, feel that I'm ensconced in this uh, uh, beautiful history of, of Winnipeg that uh, starts in the morning when I walk the riverbank past the uh, Museum for Human Rights and into the Forks. And I think, wow, now I get to make something that uh, is going to uh, add my piece of time to this whole uh, Place. Wow. And it's uh, the the gallery, is it on the main floor or is it on the second floor of the second floor? Second floor, top of the curly stairs. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was reading I was reading somewhere else. Um, there's even some of your art on the main floor. Like it's it's in the Yeah. Well, you know, the beauty of that, it, I did a piece in twenty seventeen called The Canoes. And I have uh, three different uh, primary colored canoes mounted on the wall with I think there's a total of about twenty 22 characters paddling these canoes and uh, it's supposed to be an all-inclusive reflective uh, uh, port- portrait in time of our society so I've uh, I-, I hope that people can go there and uh, look up and identify themselves and perhaps identify their neighbors and uh, what it is to be Canadian mm, that's great do you approach your art any differently when you're working at it at the gallery as opposed to working it at home, or, or is it pretty much the same same idea? Same well, process? you can tell by looking at me that I'm a very disciplined fellow. <laughs> and uh, what I do is I have uh, two workbenches. I have one at the Forks, and I have one in my South Point Douglas studio. And uh, I'm able to uh, transfer my skills from one bench to the other. And because of the nature of the work, which is, you know, it's process oriented. I can I can do it every anywhere. I haven't done it from uh, I don't know jumping out of an airplane or anything, but uh, it's it's such a, um, a a skill that's become second nature to me. Yet at the same time, it remains um, uh, a thrill to be able to uh, take a lump of clay and turn it into something. So I can do it on any bench presented to me. Mm. So let's talk about the pandemic. Uh, what happened with you in the gallery once the pandemic lockdowns happened? Well, the Forks was on a, um, a provincial government directed uh, directive, um, I should say. And uh, so it was shut down for weeks on end, recently 10 weeks. So I, uh, I just uh, continued to, uh, you know, I have a bunch of houseplants that needed watering at the Forks. But other than that, I continued to do work out of my studio, and a lot of it, I have to say, was inspired by the pandemic, not by the uh, nature of the pandemic, but by the fact that it suggests to everyone that we better get a move on, that if you got things to do, that was a pretty good time to be getting them done. So um, I, uh, I explored a number of things in my work that, um, for me, it was, uh, again, I, I, was, uh, I was right into it, and now... Um, I've got a gallery full of new stuff as a result. And this is, uh, doing some reading about you, this is one of the things that is sort of a constant in your work is that this idea of your work very often reflects what's going on around you and you're constantly thinking about that when you're, uh, when you're sculpting, right? Yeah, and uh, I, I think that goes back to, to my, uh, my initial understanding or my initial belief or my initial desire to believe that a figurine maker was an integral part of every shtetl. 
and that uh, being uh, somebody who represented maybe with tongue in cheek, uh, as much as we don't have uh, the court of the king anymore, I think a jester's role is still pretty important in society. So uh, I have uh, de- I declare myself the uh, the jester in the funhouse mirror that's trying to present a warped uh, reflection of who we are in an effort to uh, have us wake up and get with the program because um, you know that's that that's what the overall message would be in my work. But uh, I I do it in uh, in a way that uh, is time honored. I I try to do it with uh, you know. Uh, a sophisticated humor and a uh, um, an adherence to the craft and to the uh, conditions of the clay and everything. So it's it's uh, I'm just uh, th- the next generation of guys doing this. You know, uh, it, it's it's a beautiful art form, but the uh, the tradition of uh, poking fun at society or exposing it or uh, uh, reveling in it, celebrating it. Um, are all the, you know, you run the gamut of emotions with, in the world, and I try to do that in my art, too. So sort of talk me through this. You've got a piece of clay on the table, and do you have in your head already what that piece of clay is going to become? Well, I know what it can become, <laughs> and I have uh, extensive notebooks and sketchbooks and stuff that I've, I've put together but when asked, I, I, I like to say that I have a warehouse full of ideas, and every now and again I just give it a shake on my shoulders and something will rattle out of one of my ears. But uh, it is more disciplined than that, and uh, usually the pieces that are uh, a free-for-all for me are pieces where I, uh, I draw from different areas of my, uh, uh, my past or, uh, or I've been stirred by something uh, in the, the news of the day or whatever, and uh, I'm able to realize it on my workbench just by, uh, you know, I, so I, I do know where it's going, but uh, there's still happy surprises all along the way. And uh, there's always added value to the piece because uh, it's like a painting, you know, as you, as you begin to compile and compose it, there's more things that go into it. And uh, even, even the passage of time, which might be only as long as it takes for the clay to dry, in that time, you can, uh, uh, you know, flesh out uh, your initial uh, pinch at the clay and uh, and come to some uh, piece that you, um, you su- surprise even yourself. Mm-hmm. Winnipeg is known for a strong artistic community. Uh, what words do you have for any other artists in the community, in particular about survival during this time of COVID-19? Well, my initial advice was duck. <laughs> but I don't think a lot of people were listening, so now my advice is run. <laughs> uh, and I say that tongue-in-cheek, of course, but uh, working as an artist is, is one of those things that you're driven to do, and whether it's the water or the you know long, uh, frigid winters that we suffer through or, or what it is, there's a, a resilience to a Winnipeg artist that... Uh, I've never experienced it anywhere else. You know, I know that there are other strong art communities in other cities and stuff. But uh, there's something about Winnipeg where um, I, th- I think uh, it, it, th- there's a genuine nature to art makers. And it's something that, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very grassroots in a lot of ways. It's, um, it's something that... Um, you know, whether it's the art school or the architecture school or whoever's supplying these people, these young kids, these emerging artists with these ideas that you can survive as an artist, I say keep doing it because um, if there's not work for those young artists now, I think in the world that we're creating, there's going to be a lot of work for them. Sure. Absolutely. That's and I think that work comes out of being leaders in ideas, being, you know, motivated to uh, to make the world a better place. Mm, sort of leads me into my next question. How can the rest of us ensure the survival of our art, artistic community here in Winnipeg? Well, aside from purchasing art from me often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, that <laughs> assured my survival. Right. Oh, th- but that might be tied into the uh, the whole survival. I think I think that supporting the arts is, is an important thing. And I think that, um, you know, uh, we have an incredible arts community here. 
whether it's the uh, the uh, performing arts or the visual arts, however, whatever basket you want to put it into, it's something that is uh, unique, as unique as uh, the very nature of the prairie, as unique as the bison that roam it or the polar bears up north or whatever. We have something here that uh, has uh, has been built on the the length of the history of this city. It's 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 an integral component of it, and. Um, I can't see it, it uh, dying of, of neglect, although in many ways I see evidence of that. But uh, for the most part, I think that we've just got to, uh, to realize that there is a, uh, a significant role for artists and that um, uh, they should be adhered. To, you know, you, you should be able to uh, listen to the artists. <laughs> Absolutely. World Without Art is a pretty... Uh it's a yeah. bleak, bleak place. Yeah, people used to say we'd be naked on a footpath if it weren't for the arts. Yeah. So uh, w- if we look around at every every uh, nook and cranny, art art has reached into it. It it's, it's made it what it what it is. Mm. Beautiful. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you and ch- check out your art, or perhaps. Uh, ask for a commission, where can they get a hold of you? How can they check out your gallery? Yeah, I think that would be the best place, would be to come down to the Forks. And uh, during this pandemic, of course, uh, social distancing is very important. But I think most galleries have a history of social distancing. And uh, don't be afraid to come in a gallery. Don't be afraid to come into my gallery because... uh, Often I think people might have, uh, th- they might feel intimidated by art. But uh, uh, I try to make it very accessible and very welcoming. So just walk through the door and say hello. Okay. And uh, if you can't do that, phone me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jordan, this has just been great. As a musician myself, it's been terrific to talk to another artist here in Winnipeg who's from a different artistic discipline. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me today. It's, it's been, been a real great. treat. Thank you very much. Thank you.